Time flies when you're having fun and watching some high school football around the age. This is Mark Henry here on the Third Coast Gridiron on the LSG Network, brought to you each week by Fat Cow Beef Jerky, real food, no bull. Week eight's upon us, deep off in district play. Uh, we'll have a special guest today is R.L. Martin from 2M. GE. He's a scout that goes around the state of Texas watching some of the best action, some of the best players, and he was in H-Town this week for one of our big dog games of the week in Week 7, C King versus Kingwood, a 21-6A matchup. Two possible teams that will be gunning and trying to position themselves probably in those third and fourth spots in district. We'll talk about that game and a couple of players that he likes, and uh, he's a, a San Antonio resident, and he has the scoop on a couple of San Antonio area teams that could possibly face off face off against a couple of teams from the H as the playoffs p- progress. Also, we'll talk about a few grind and shine players from Week 7 and look at a few big dog games in Week 8. Again, Mark Henry here on the Third Coast Grind. We will pay some bills and hear from one of our sponsors and be right back. Living in Texas, you guys know that the weather is so unpredictable, almost bipolar at times. We don't know if it's going to be rainy or sunny. It's going to be storming. We could get snow. That takes a toll on your roof. My guys over at American Shield Roofing and Construction can take care of you. They are dependable, honest, and insured. When you find yourself in need of a roofing repair or looking for a roofing company, look no further than American Shield Roofing and Construction. When dealing with a roofing company, you need a roofing contractor who is dependable, who arrives on time, and can provide you a quality new roof in a timely manner. They give you an honest quote, as accurate as can be, and they give accurate estimates. Check out American Shield Roofing and Construction. Give them a call at 361-343-7018. That is 361 361- Three four three seven zero one eight, and you can also go on the website and schedule an inspection or get a quote. That is AmericanShieldRoofing dot com. One more time, AmericanShieldRoofing dot com. A proud sponsor of the Third Coast Gridiron. Hey, football fans! Christmas is right around the corner. We have the perfect gift for your high school football fan in your life. Friday Night Legends, the board game. With Friday Night Legends, you can play the greatest high school teams of all time against each other based on their real stats. That means you can play the 1989 Odessa Permian Panthers of Friday Night Lights fame against the 2017 Mater Day team and really see who's the better team. Or what about Peyton Manning's Newman High School in New Orleans against Trevor Lawrence's Cartersville, Georgia team? There are thousands of teams in the library from all over the United States. Get your copy of Friday Night Legends at BoardGameLegends.com and be the hero of Christmas morning. Before we get to our grind and shine players that stood out this week, let's talk about a few scores around the age. Clear Springs, 38-21 over Brazoswood. That gives Brazoswood their first loss of the year. Big 24-6A win for Clear Springs. Zashan Edwards, again, had a great game. Scored on runs of 16, 14, and 10 in the first half. He's a guy that we're going to definitely have to reach out to and get on a third coast gridiron. Another score from around the eggs, Dickinson 31, Clear Frost 22, Chance Gage hit a 35-yard field goal, and a three-yard touchdown run by Malachi McNair with about a minute and 16 left in the game, put Dickinson over the edge, 31-22. to Dickinson, the Gators are playing very good football. Shout out to the Gators for a big win. Pearland 40-7 to over Alvin. Shadow Creek 62-7. to 
over A Leaf Elsick. Morton Ranch, big victory over Katie Taylor, 45 to 31. Quarterback Josh Johnson scored two second half touchdowns to help Morton Ranch in a big 19 6 A matchup. Again, that's one of the more competitive districts around the age. Shout out to Morton Ranch. Seven Lakes, 24. 13 over Maid Creek. Marshall comes into the H. Man, wrecked up in Texas City, 40 to nothing. Couple of more scores before we get into our Grand and Shine Players of the Week. Full sure, big one over Friendswood, 45 to 14. That drops Friendswood overall, 3 and 4 on the year, 2 and 3 in district play big win for full sure that brings those guys over there the chargers five and one and three and one in district play big time victory for them jersey village bounced back they're five and one two and one in district 54 to three over cypress ridge great bounce back by jersey village big time matchup in 17 6a those guys are balling out this year that drops cypress ridge to two and four and two and one in district. George Ranch in an overtime victory over Bush, twenty to seventeen. George Ranch picked up a big win in twenty six A play. The Longhorns four and one in district. They're still pulling out in second place right now, and that drops George Ranch. Uh, that puts them in it puts them in the driver's seat for that second or third position. Again, this is the time of the year where teams, coaches, and players are setting themselves up. And starting to jockey for position as playoff seeding will be determined here in the next couple of weeks. George Ranch having a tough year that drops them, excuse me, Bush that drops them to 0 and 6 and 0 and 4. Galveston Ball put up 76 over Houston Austin, 76 to 0. Ball, Galveston Ball, 6 and 0 on the year. They've outscored their opponents to check this out 284 to 7. Big time shutout. Shout out to Galveston Ball. One more score for you, Cy Fair over Cypress Creek. They remain at the top in first place in 17-6A, 35-21. Uh, the Bobcats 5-1 and 3-0 and in and district. They're now, man, that's five in a row since dropping their open against Bridgeland. And those guys are playing very, very good football. Uh, we'll take a small break here on the Third Coast Gridiron on LSU Network. And we will come back with R.L. Martin from 2MG. Talk about Kingwood versus C. King. Be right back. Mark Henry here, man. We appreciate you listening to the Third Coast Gridiron, man. But as I move around from stadium to stadium and event to event, sometimes I get hungry and I just can't stop at Whataburger or Jack in the Box or anywhere to grab something. I reach in my bag and get some fat cow beef jerky. Real food, no bull, man. It's jerky made from 100% beef. Uh, fat cow beef jerky is a small business with a big heart and love for high quality, man. We're talking about the ultimate flavored meat snacks, man, with a taste of real American ingenuity, man. I love Fat Cow Beef Jerky. And this year, I'm proud to say that Fat Cow Beef Jerky is the title sponsor for the Third Coast Gridiron. Check out Fat Cow Beef Jerky. Utterly perfect jerky. This show is brought to you by the book, All I Need to Know I Learned from My Texas High School Football Coach. A handbook of wisdom for parents, young people, and yes, even coaches. Head over to www.learnedfromcoach.com and order your copy to support sharing the stories of these great coaches and leaders. That's learnedfromcoach.com. Mark Henry here on the LSG Network on the Third Coast Gridiron Ace Towns Podcast, brought to you each week by Fat Cow Beef Jerky, Real Food, No Bull. We're going to switch it up a little bit. It was a game we talked about last week in District 21-6A. Now, we know that North Shore has been the king of the hill for a while. you got Atascacita. But two teams that were kind of jockeying for position that I thought that could probably be in the third or fourth spots took on each other. Now, we're talking about C. King and Kingwood. King was coming off a really tough game against North Shore the previous week. 
But uh, everybody saw those guys at the beginning of the season as a team that could possibly challenge the North Shores, the Tascacitas. But they've already faced uh, North Shore, and they still have to face a Tascacita, Beaumont United, Summer Creek as well, who's playing well, and then Westbrook to finish out the season. But C King, the Panthers came out on top 42 to 21 over Kingwood in a District 21 6A game. Now let's talk about King a little bit. They were noted for their defense. Uh, they only given up 143 points, uh, the total. That's for the season so far. And they've put up a total of 209 points. And King, on the other hand, falls to one and two. Uh, but they've given up quite a bit more than they've scored on defense with 142 points. This is their first loss in a little while. Uh, but we're going to talk to one of the scouts that I know from around the state of Texas. He's based out of the San Antonio area. But R.L. Martin, one of the top scouts coming out of the San Antonio area, he does his thing. He made his way down to the H, and he checked out this game. So we're going to bring in R.L. Martin and just get his thoughts on the game. And he's going to talk about two guys that stood out to him uh, going into this game. Ariel, how you doing, man? Come on in. I'm doing all right, brother. Appreciate you having me on the show. Third coach, great hour. Yes, sir, man. We appreciate you for joining us and taking out a little time. Now, this was a a game, like I said, that was built up as a a matchup. This is probably third or fourth in the district between these two teams. Definitely C. King came in with a lot, uh, you know, a big reputation from last year. They went about four games deep. Uh, last year, and they've, they've went to the, they've gone to the playoffs the last couple of years, but they just couldn't get over the hump district wise to kind of set themselves up. North Shore is still the king of the castle, king of the hill, until they're knocked off the throne. Right now, that puts King at two and one overall. Uh, Atasca Cedars three and zero, North Shore's three and zero. Summer Creek just got their first loss against North Shore last week. This is kind of setting the stage for. Uh, you know, a tightly contested run between three and four. Huh? So tell me what you thought about the overall game. Again, C King's a very, very awesome facility to kind of watch a game. Uh, you know, oh, myself, my yeah. I know myself, a scout, you a scout. We see venues each week as we go around the state of Texas. But this was a great venue as well. Uh, just talk about the game a little bit before you get into the guys that you like. Well, talking about the facilities first, Sheldon ISD did a great job on putting this facility together. Um, I'll put it to you this way. When I stepped on the field, um, it was like I was walking on mattresses, man. That that turf is just immaculately kept up. Um, going into it, uh, we started off with the pregame. They came out. Uh, <clears throat> CE King looked sharp. They were together. They were focused. Uh, they were hyped. They were ready for the game. Uh, Kingwood came out the same way. Uh, both have different styles to coming out to the game. So you got to kind of, you know, you got to kind of put your hat on and find out who's doing what and who's going to warm up the right way. So we went and looked at some players, uh, got our list together, and uh, we put that out on a 2MGE Twitter page for the players for each team. Now, as far as the game, man, um, this game was back and forth. For the first three quarters. I mean, a great game that you did not want to go to the concession stand. You did not want to go to the bathroom because just as soon as you do, you're going to miss something. Um, both defenses, you know, kind of felt each other out, you know, made stops, but, you know, they were putting up points. Um, tie game, back and forth. Then you had C.E. King go up, King would go up. C.E. King go up, King would go up, and it just kept going back and forth. And then uh, C. King ultimately pulled it out there in the fourth quarter. End of the end of the third, going into the fourth quarter, they just pulled away from him. Um, the players that really stood out for me, the one <clears throat> everybody knows, and I know they know, um, what's that? That's number twelve. That is Donovan Spencer. I know everybody knows him. Um, D. N. That played there, commit uh, Texas commit. But a guy that played on the other side of him, man, that really stood out to me, uh, shared time on the field with another gentleman, uh, is Cam Beiser. Um, fits the frame, man. He's He's got the size. He's got the physicality. He's got the speed. He's got the power. He had the moves, uh, violent hands when he was out there on the field, just was disruptive when he was out there, man. Really caught my eye in uh, pregame. 
and um, wasn't out there to start the game, but he did come in. And when he came in, you you knew that he was there. Um, so that really helped their defense. They put pressure on the quarterback all game long. Uh, their secondary really made it difficult uh, with their coverage skills for, for those receivers to get open. Uh, first half, I'll tell you one thing. First half, there's a player from Kingwood, the guy I want to, I want to uh, spotlight from Kingwood that gave C.E. King the business all first half. Young man's name is Tyler Harrington. I want to make sure that I'm saying his name right. It is, he is number 84. That is Tyler Harrington. He is a wide receiver slash tight end. He's a junior, 6'3", 220 pounds. And he was giving them headache all first half, man. Uh, when I tell you it was go routes, it was post routes, it was a crossing route, uh, whatever they needed to do, he was making the big catches in traffic. Um, and it's such a big body that the, the corner, I mean, they were right there on him, but the quarterback was putting the ball where his receiver could get it. He'd go up and get it, and his body so big they couldn't get around him. But um, that young man really, really impressed me. And just a junior, 6'3", and has the frame, too. Man, that was uh, really good. But as I said, C.E. King uh, pounded the ball on him there in the fourth quarter. Um, you could tell Kingwood probably got a little winded, a little tired being on the field, uh, had some turnovers. Um, so C.E. King evidently, I mean, you know, they, they pulled it out there at the end, just pounded on him, uh, running the ball. in. that running back from C.E. King, um, he just – he just basically did his thing at the end. And I'm talking about Keith Willis. Keith Willis uh, was the workhorse there at the end of the game that just basically just put it out of reach. So, I mean, it was a tight game all the way up to third quarter. Got to the fourth quarter there. They pounding the ball, had some things go their way. And see, he even came out with that win. Uh, bruh, good, very good game there, like I said, until third and fourth quarter. Yeah, I had a chance to see some cutoffs from Harrington's performance. Eight catches, 159 yards, and a TD. Uh, the longest catch, you know, I had it. I saw him break away from everybody, and he extended himself very well, and almost got in if it wasn't for the trailer uh, yeah. catching up with him. But uh, a great strider, good hands. Uh, you know, he's a hands catcher. He's got long arms as well. So, you know, at the film, a long strider. So I definitely think that Harrington's got a chance to develop into one of the better uh, pass catchers heading into his senior year after he started to come on. I mean, that was a very, very good secondary that he had a great game against. And, you know, back to Cam Beiser, he's committed to Colorado. Uh, long athletic frame that you want to have at the next level. I agree. Uh, a couple of solo tackles, one sack. You know, that's the that King defense, uh, including Beiser, who's just his first year with those guys, comes in as, as a defense that's around, a, you know, the city of Houston. You know, we've been talking about those guys as, you know, a team that could come in and challenge North Shore and challenge the Tascacitas. So that defense is, is very good. And, you know, I, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly that Bosch is a guy that, that you want to see. I mean, the University of Colorado, uh, you know, has famously come, you know, back in the 90s, uh, come down there and pluck defensive players from the Houston area, you know, from the H. That's not nothing, uh, you know, new for that, for those guys to come down to Texas and get some talent. And I definitely think, I agree, Harrington's, put himself on the map with a big time performance there. And uh, you mentioned Willis. Yeah, with me. Absolutely. You mentioned Willis, you know, he's been doing that. Uh, you know, he had a rough game last week against a great defense in North shore uh, the week before, but you know, he kind of reestablished himself. And I look for these, both of these teams to make a push, especially King probably sitting third or fourth. And it's going to be a scramble between Kingwood and summer Creek and those other guys, you know, for that third or fourth district spot coming out of 21, six, eight, but, um, you know, I know that you guys uh, shout out to my guy, Mike Morris, as well. Or the other half uh, of the two, two MGE uh, family. Uh, so tell me a little bit about a couple of teams that could possibly, you know, meet some Houston teams in that third round, you know, pre pe depending on how things shake out. Uh, coming out of SA, out of San Antonio, give me two teams that you probably think that are going to make some make a run and uh, can possibly meet up with somebody from the H. Well, one that is definitely going to make it, I'm going to give you the shoe in right now because they are number one in the city, undefeated uh, Cibolo Steel. Uh, 
everybody, if you follow Texas Texas high school football, you know the um, the pedigree of Cibolo Steele, going back to Malcolm Brown, um, who's in the NFL right now. They've got some other players that just – they've got some players on that team, man, that are just – playing above what everybody thought they were going to be. They got some sophomores. They got a starting sophomore quarterback right now. Um, his, his nickname is the future, Chad Warner. Uh, Chad Warner has came in, and he was splitting time at the beginning um, beginning of the season with um, their quarterback from last year, who was a senior. Uh, their quarterback from last year during the offseason, give you all a little tidbit on it, he ran a 4-3. Uh, at a camp and uh, played some receivers, some slot at camps and turned out to be Chad took over at the quarterback and the quarterback from last year, I'm, I'm forgetting the guy's name and I, can, I cannot believe I'm doing that, but um, he's now the slot receiver. So they've got, they've got young kids at receiver. You've got two other sophomores, Royal Capel, um, Coop, Coop is out there. You've got a defense that is starting to come into their own. They've got some stuff that they've got to work on, but if they come together in the next, during this district, they come together, barring injury or anything else, they'll be ready for the playoffs. I think that's definitely going to be one of the teams that you're going to see that are, that that is poised to make a deep run with talent-wise and everything else. Uh, looking at another team, if I had to choose another team to come out from the playoffs, it's, it's, it's kind of tough because everybody else is in a close race. But you also got to think about the Brennan Bears. Uh, they're number one in their district. <clears throat> they just had a game against Warren the other night. Uh, close game. Uh, they're, they were tested in that game. But they have the talent on both sides of the football. Um, they have a receiver over there that I, I don't think gets enough credit. Uh, Aaron Dubose, his brother is Ashton Dubose, who's the quarterback. But Aaron Dubose is, stands about 6'3", 6 6'4". 6 uh, he's a receiver. I don't think he gets the credit he deserves. But, um, yeah, I think out of San Antonio area, those are the two teams that will make a deep run into the playoffs and possibly see somebody from Houston. And – Whoever plays that steel team, I'm telling you right now, you got to be ready because they have another receiver that I just thought about, uh, who's also a quarterback in the, in the waiting, uh, six four Sean Robinson. When you see this kid, man, you think automatic D one. You you know what a D one athlete looks like, um, Mark. I'm telling you, when you see this kid, he stands out straight D one player, but. Those two teams may be the one, Brennan, the Brennan Bears, and Cibolo Steel Knights out of the San Antonio area. Definitely have to agree with you about Cibolo Steel. Uh, you know, I, I've had a chance to see Chad since he was a young pup. This is his year. I thought he would emerge. Uh, Chad Warner, I'm speaking of. Uh, he's only a sophomore, and he is getting better each game. Uh, over 1,300 yards passing, 11 TDs, only two interceptions. Uh, we're talking about he's averaging over 200 yards a game through the air. And what's so special about Chad Warner is his poise in the pocket. He navigates the pocket correctly. Uh, you know, he doesn't get out of sync with his hips, his footwork. Uh, you know, this is a guy that's been preparing himself for this particular stage, and he's on it now. And, and the thing, you know, RL, he still has two more years of varsity football. Two more years, man. To go. Yeah. He's going to be a national recruit before it's said and done. That's Chad yeah. Warner, Cibolo Steel High School, San Antonio. Very familiar with Chad Warner. Uh, I've seen some of his games this year. Um, and I believe that he's on his way on the cusp to being, you know, elite 11 type quarterback. He's putting up the numbers as a sophomore. He's only going to get better. His work ethic speaks for himself. Uh, but I do know Ashton DeBose, a quarterback, and uh, I, I don't think I've seen uh, – the other DeBose very much, but I do know about Ashton as well. Uh, I, I agree with you on those two teams coming out of San Antonio. Uh, you know, Chad Warner and company still have a couple of tough games left uh, on their docket as they still have to take on uh, Judson, which is going to be a rivalry game for those guys uh, in SA. Wow. Uh, you know, but looking at some of the scores, they beat a good Lake Travis team, 35-28. Brennan, 
uh, 35, 34, an overtime victory over Midland legacy from West Texas. And then they came, uh, you know, and uh, welcomed in Fort Bend Christian out of, the, out of the H out of Sugarland, uh, which is usually a very, very good team in the private school ranks. Uh, and then this past week, they took care of New Braunfels who beat Den Ryan out of the DFW area in that first game in a comeback. Uh, but they took care of business 42, 24. So they're putting up points. Uh, we're talking about a team that's, uh, almost 250 points put up as an offense and only giving up 137. They're on a six-game winning streak. I can't I can't deny those guys. And definitely look for, uh, you know, lots of teams coming out of San Antonio. And, uh, you know, again, we appreciate you coming on the third coast gridiron and uh, shedding a little light on that. But uh, also, uh, before we get you going, let you get out of here, uh, sh- share you guys' social medias, yourself and Mike Morris, uh, and uh, Twitter that you guys use. Because, listen, guys, if you want to get some exposure, these are two guys that you need to know about around the state of Texas. They're heavy in the game on the scouting uh, platform, and they also give kids a lot of exposure. They don't just talk to the four or five stars. These guys talk to guys that send them film over and over each week. You know, I'm in touch with these guys. We worked side by side the last couple of years. And I just wanted to bring him on the third coast gridiron because – I knew that he was coming uh, to a big game down in the age of 21-6A. And, uh, so go ahead and give out that RL and uh, tell everybody where they can find you guys. You can find us mainly on the Twitter page, man. We are, um, like Mark said, if, if you have the talent and the grades to play at a next level, and I say that again, the grades, you got to have that young athletes. If you have the talent and the grades to play at the next level, uh, don't key in on just, oh, I'm, I want to go D1, I want to go D1. There's great ball play, D2, D3, NAIA, JUCO, all over this country. Um, and if you have the talent to play at that level, the next level, we want to make sure that we get eyes on you to get you there. On Twitter, uh, we are at, at 2MGE underscore. Myself, I'm at uh, underscore RL underscore Martin. Mike is at um, at... Mike M underscore scout. Yeah, we're at 2MG. We've expanded a little bit. We have Coach Ace. Also, that's his Twitter. He's up in the Minnesota area. And we got Coach Miller. Coach uh, is uh, at DKM Miller uh, on our Twitter. Y'all hit us up. Follow us. Send those films in. And like you said, once we get notice from a coach uh, that they're looking for a certain talent, we will put out tweets and let you know that, hey, this is what we're looking for. The coaches will follow that up. We're also sending that out to coaches as well. Uh, the database that we have reaches all the way across the country. We have all the emails, all the Twitters. So, hey, y'all give us a shout out. We're here to help. We're here to do whatever we can to get the eyes on you to get you noticed and get you playing at the next ne- next level to get that free education. That's what it's all about. Again, we appreciate you joining us here on the Third Coast Gridiron. We're going to pay some bills and take a break here from one of our sponsors, and we'll be right back with our Grind and Shine Players of the Week here on the Third Coast Gridiron on the LSC Network. If you're looking for a home or an apartment or looking for first-class service and selling a property, call the Location Agency. The Location Agency is a first-class real estate group with the resources to help you locate, buy, and sell property throughout Texas. The Location Agency has been serving Texas real estate clients for over 20 years and can help you with all of your real estate needs. Give them a call at 832-724-0631 and ask for JR. The Location Agency is a proud supporter of the Third Coast Gridiron and the Lone Star Gridiron Network. Go to thelocationagency.net for more information. This is the part of the show where we like to spotlight guys who got their grind on, got their shine on, in week seven, let's get right into it. We're gonna go to HISD with it. Wall trip the Rams. Sean Crawford. He plays on the offensive side. Plays on the defensive side. Wall trip got a big forty-five to zero victory over Madison. Uh, he finished with three catches for ninety-six yards and a touchdown. Also had an interception and a fumble recovery on defense. Shout out to Sean Crawford. We will talk about Randon Fontanet, quarterback, defensive back. Senior at Brazosport, big game for Fontenette. 
in a 27-19 to victory over Iowa Colony. He passed for 95 yards in a touchdown, also rushed for another 96 yards in another score. And guess what? Hopped on the defensive side of DB, two interceptions. Big-time performance for Randon Fontenet. Big-time performance also from the quarterback, a junior from Episcopal High School, Carson Gordon. Led the Knights to a 41-7 victory over St. John's. Uh, he completed 11 of 16 for 214 yards and four touchdowns. Also used his legs to get in the end zone for a score. Let's jump on the defensive side, man. The moon was rising in Shadow Creek. Darius Moon, D. Lyman Sr. Man, he was in the backfield all night. The Sharks, 62-7 over Elsick. Six tackles, five for tackles for loss, four sacks, and a forced fumble. He was all over the place. Definitely shout out to Darius Moon. He got his grind on and his shine on. Let's hop over to Dobie. Cameron Matthews, a sophomore running back. He had a huge game in a 57 to 27 victory over Pasadena Memorial. Man, he got busy. 149 yards and two touchdowns, 87 receiving yards and another score. And check this out. He's a special teams threat, an 82 yard kickoff return for a touchdown. Shout out to Dobie High School's Cameron Matthews. Let's continue with the running backs. Let me talk about this guy. I had a chance to see him at the Houston Roundup. He is a legit, probably going to be a national recruit over at St. Thomas High School, Johan Cardenas. Big time performance. He's been balling out for the Eagles in a 35 to 18 victory over San Antonio Central Catholic. 194 yards rushing, two touchdowns, 26 uh, 21 yards, uh, 21 carries, and then check this out. Also, he can get it done through the air. He's got great hands on a 23-yard touchdown reception to go along with his two touchdowns on the ground. Had a chance to see him at the roundup. Big physical running back. Uh, he looks the part, but he also runs with authority. He can get in and out of holes quickly. Uh, he's a guy that, that – Man, he squats over 500 pounds. Uh, he's got several schools after him uh, from around the country, uh, definitely in the state of Texas, UTSA, Colorado, I believe. Uh, talking with Coach McGuire, they lean heavily on Cardenas, and he's one of the guys over there at St. Thomas to go along with Dante Lewis that's been showing up and showing out for St. Thomas. Again, big game for Johan Cardenas, a junior running back that you want to know here in H Town. Now, I usually don't have repeat performers, but I want to go with this guy because of what he did. Check it out. David Armador the second. He is normally a lineup at wide receiver, but with the injury to the starting quarterback, check it out. Man, he ran for 235 yards, three touchdowns to lead the Mustang offense in a big victory over Summer Creek, 34-27. to Amador is a Swiss Army knife. He's been getting it done. And the reason he's a repeat, grind and shine, recognized player of the week is because of what he's doing, uh, you know, in short term, uh, you know, in, in quick work. Uh, he didn't have a chance to get ready against C. King, and he's been thrust into the spotlight at the quarterback position when he normally plays wide receiver. It's a UTSA commit, and he's doing his thing. Shout out to Armador II and the Mustangs for continuing their winning race. We're going to check out Quentin Jones, Jersey Village. He's a junior running back. Again, we talked about Jersey Village. Roll into a 54-3 victory over Cypress Ridge. 214 yards, three TDs. He got the job done. One more running back. This is our last ground and shine player of the week. Justin Castillo. Klein Collins. He's a senior. Now, we know about Tucker Park. Shout out to my guy over there. That's his quarterback. He's a junior. But Castillo... He had several big plays as the Tigers got a 61-49 to victory over Tom Ball Memorial. Check this out. A little shade under 300 yards, 275 yards, rumbling on the ground, two TDs. Castillo got his ball on. He got his grind and shine on. We'll come back and talk about week eight real quick before we get out of here on the third coast ground. Let's pay some bills here from one of our sponsors. Living in Texas, you guys know that the weather's so unpredictable, almost bipolar at times. We don't know if it's going to be rainy or sunny. It's going to be storming. We could get snow. That takes a toll on your roof. My guys over at American Shield 
Roofing and construction can take care of you. They are dependable, honest, and insured. When you find yourself in need of a roofing repair or looking for a roofing company, look no further than American Shield Roofing and Construction. When dealing with a roofing company, you need a roofing contractor who is dependable, who arrives on time, and can provide you a quality new roof in a timely manner. They give you an honest quote, as accurate as can be, and they give accurate estimates. Check out American Shield Roofing and Construction. Give them a call at 361-343-7018. That is 361-343-7018. And you can also go on the website and schedule an inspection or get a quote. That is AmericanShieldRoofing.com. One more time, AmericanShieldRoofing.com. A proud sponsor of the Third Coast Gridiron. Hey, did you play Texas high school football? If you did, you're part of an elite group. The Brotherhood of Texas High School Football. All football players, past and present, who have ever suited up in the Lone Star State are eligible. Go to LoneStarGridiron.com slash Brotherhood. And thank you for the part you played in the greatest sport in the greatest state. Dog game of the week. We're gonna fuck with some one game this week. It will be Cypress Ranch versus Bridgeland. Cypress Ranch comes in five and one on a five game winning streak. Bridgeland with a big victory last week to stay at two and one in the district over Cypress Falls. This is a big, big contest and will probably shake out who's gonna be at the top of the district. Uh, right now, the Cypress Ranch has put up 261 points, only giving up 114, but Bridgeland, a little bit closer, even though they're on a two-game winning streak. Uh, they've scored almost 150 points and given up 126, but this is going to be a game that's going to come down to who's uh, you know, leading there in the fourth quarter. Uh, right now, Bridgeland sitting in two and one in second place, tied with Cypress Falls, Cypress Woods, and Cypress Springs for a three-way tie right now. This is a big game. 16-6A. We're going to see who's going to come out on top. We will know after this weekend. Uh, shout out to both teams. Love it around there. Uh, Bridgeland, uh, you know, had the history of doing very well. But guess what? Connor Wagman's in College Station at A&M now. Can they continue this trend? Can they continue to be dominant? They're going to run up against a great Cypress Ranch team coming up on Friday. It's a 7 o'clock kickoff. That's our big dog game of the week here on the Third Coast Grid Island on the LSG Network. We appreciate you joining us again. Check us out each week here on the LSG Network brought to you by Fat Cow Beef Jerky, real food, no bull. Follow us on Twitter at Third Grid Island, and also you can follow me at MarkHen44 or on the DA on the Mark M-A-R-C Sports. That's all we have for you this week. We'll be back and talk about Everything we saw in week eight here on the Third Coast Gridiron. Are you looking for a podcast network that talks Texas by Texans? Well, check us out. You're already listening to us, but go to the website, LoneStarPodcast.com. You can also find us on every big podcast platform, LSPN. We have shows in business, entertainment, marketing, music, of course, sports. We have some of the best sports podcasts in the state of Texas, ranging from high school football all the way up to pro basketball. So check us out online, LoneStarPodcast.com. That's the LSPN on every major podcast platform.